What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here coming at you with another GTX 1080 video and your inbox is probably gonna explode with these videos because it is official launch day for GTX 1080 and for the last several weeks you have been teased and pretty much shown performance for all the Founders Edition cards which people are like, whatever, okay, it's reference, we're tired of hearing about that and the fact that it even costs $100 more really kind of deflated the entire hype balloon. I don't know if hype's usually a balloon, but anyway, it was pretty deflated. Computex just happened or is happening right now, technically. And I'm gonna be taking a look here at the EVGA super clocked GTX 1080 ACX 3.0. It's a new cooler on the reference board. So what exactly does that mean? Well, we're gonna find out today. Looking for better sound while on the go? Then head to Mass Drop because right now they have an amazing drop going for the Sentrance DACPort Slim, delivering big sound and a small 2.5 ounce package that fits comfortably in the palm of your hand, all while delivering enough power to rock your favorite headphones. Click the link below for this exclusive offer only at Mass Drop. All right, so this is a Founders card, and this is also a Founders card. What does that mean? It means they are the exact same board layout. There's nothing custom about the PCB on the EVGA board. In fact, it even says NVIDIA right here on the PCI Express socket. So what that means is these two boards are pretty much identical. But what's different here is the fact that we have the ACX 3.0 cooler on here. And because we're gonna get better thermals, we are going to get better clock speeds out of the box. In fact, the base clock on the ACX 3.0 is 1708 megahertz, up from the 1607 found on the Founders card. And then our boost clock on here is 1847 megahertz, up from 1733 on the Founders card. And it's gonna do it a whole lot quieter. One other thing to note is because this is a Founders Edition card means we are not going to see any additional power limit above 120 uh, because of the limitations of the VRM design that's on here. So you're gonna have to wait for custom boards to be built like For The Win, Classified, and all of the other brands uh, before you're gonna start seeing increased power limit which could help with some of your overclocking. Now let's just spend a moment here on the new ACX 3.0 cooler which is quite obviously the most radical redesign of their ACX series coolers since it started several years ago. Now I posted a picture of this up on Twitter the other day and there was a lot of mixed reactions. Some people thought it looked super beast other folks thought it looked gaudy. Now obviously looks are subjective and one thing I want to point out is that this is real aluminum accenting on here which looks white on camera but in person it is not. It is very uh, aluminum colored with a nice black accents all over the place so it's got a really good contrast going. Unfortunately cameras just don't pick that up as well as the human eye does. But starting on the face of the card we have the same swept fan blade design as you can see right here. Um, some folks think that this looks like it's pulling air through the card. It's not. It's still pushing. They started that with the ACX 2.0. But we do have these grills right here with the white backing. These actually do glow white and they're going to give you a little bit of, I don't know, I guess a little bit of JDM underglow, if you will, when it's mounted in your card this way. Now looking at the top, we've got a giant EVGA GTX uh, or GeForce GTX 1080 logo, which does illuminate white. My personal opinion is this is a little bit big. I would have liked to have seen it a little bit more small and kind of subtle rather than just kind of be like, boom, in your face, just like 1080. Um, especially if you put a couple of these in SLI, that's gonna be really big. Um, but again, that's a, a little bit of subje subjective, if you will. Of course, there is a backplate. You guys know that EVGA would have been reamed if they didn't put a backplate on a card that cost over $600. Well, there it is. Again, vents, nice brushed aluminum, looks very, very nice. And it's gonna look great in your system because this is obviously what you spend most of your time looking at. Now, there are a number of heat pipes that are actually S-channeled along the length of the card. So they're not just straight pipe like found on the uh, 970, they do have a curve going on here, and there is a ton of heat sinks or heat sink fins in here that are going to help generate a mu as much heat dissipation as possible. And then, of course, the typical backing plate, which you'll find uh, that's touching all of the G5X memory in here, eight gigabytes of it, and of course, the VRMs. Now, because this is a Founders Edition card, I am not going to go through and redo all of my benchmarks. It's 100 megahertz faster out of the box but obviously that's gonna give us a slightly faster score or higher score in FPS in all of our games. Today we are gonna focus on overclocking this thing, keeping an eye on the temperatures, and we're gonna do some Doom in 4K max settings as high as everything will go. The 
Anti-aliasing is gonna be maxed out. I'm even gonna max out motion blur. I really wanna push this card and see exactly how well it performs in 4K on a new title. A few moments later. All right, so I've settled on a 2,088 megahertz overclock, uh, 5,508 megahertz on the RAM. So 11,000 megahertz on the RAM affected. That is so freakishly fast. Um, well over 200 FPS in some scenes here in the Heaven benchmark, completely maxed out with tessellation at uh, extreme. That was 1080p. I just wanted to show you guys what the clock was actually running at. I'm leaving the fan profile exactly as it ships out of the box. 120% um, plus on the power target, 91C temp target uh, offset, clock, or clock offsets plus 220, and that's gonna be plus 220 above the GPU boost clock that's already from the factory, not from the base clock, one thing to keep in mind. And then memory off, offset plus 500. I love the Doom franchise. I've played Doom since I was a kid. The throwback levels in this game where you can unlock, uh, ac you know, find secrets where you go back to an original level, just make it a lot of fun to play. Now I do know that this game has some issues with AMD, so that's why I'm not doing any AMD comparisons with Doom. I'm gonna wait for some optimization on that. Um, in fact, Doom, I believe, doesn't even have SLI profile right now. At least last time I tried it didn't. It might now, but at the moment um, that I tried it, it didn't work. We are going to go ahead and start at 1080p, just again, for the hell of it. This card should not be used for 1080p, unless you have a really high refresh rate, like 144 hertz panel. Um, but all the settings you can see, TSSAA is at 8TX or eight times. Motion blur is even on high. I'm really trying to stress this card out. I'm gonna move the gamma up just a little bit so we can see the dark scenes a little better. Um, we're gonna save those settings. Advanced settings, you can see everything is as far as it will go to the right. Even the film grain is up to 3.9. Hell, let's even move the sharpening up, shall we? Just for the hell of it. I don't even know what that's gonna do, but we're gonna try it anyway. Um, the other thing I need to do here is I am going to, well, you can see the frames per second right up here in the top right corner because I've got the overlay going. Hopefully you guys can actually read that. Uh, yeah, it looks like you can. So what we're gonna do here is continue to gain. So as you can see right there, the FPS is, wow. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start up fraps real quick just because it's a little bit better counter. That one moves way too fast. There we go. So you can see right there on the left, um, sharpening is on it. Everything is as high as it will go to the right. So 1080p, obviously not a challenge for this card whatsoever, but I don't think I don't think anyone really expected that to be the case. Now, I'm really bad at this game, so feel free to laugh and mock and point all you want, more so than you guys already do. I'm cool with that. Oh, that's the thing with this game. There's so many brutal kills. My gosh. Making explosions. Wow. Shotgun to the rescue. Boom. There's a lot happening right here. All right, so let's do the same battle here real quick and let's go ahead and switch it up to 1440p. All the same advanced settings. And remember sharpening is also as high as it will go. Oh God. I use your arm to break your head. Do some explosions there. So you can see even a 1440p, all settings completely maxed out, well over 100 FPS on the averages. This little gun, it's weak on its non-powered mode, but you know, it's actually a really good weapon. Let me see your head. Boom. <laughs> All right, 4K. Let's try out some 4K here. Look at this. Look at that FPS in 4K. We're still chilling. Now all we care about obviously is that magic number of 60 FPS. Can we stay above 60 FPS? Because that's kind of like some explosions there. That's like PC Master Race, right? All the 60 FPS touting. Well, we could do 60 FPS. Well, can it? So far, the answer is yes, it can. I'm lost at the moment. It's been a while since I've played this level. 
do explosion in the face. It still stayed over 60 FPS. Holy shit, man. But see, it doesn't matter if we're indoors or outdoors right now, the draw distances still seem to be very, very... Yeah, 4K is just like, whatever. Wow. I wanna point out too, I can't even hear the card because the fans are not running very quickly at all right now. Temperatures hit a max of 78. And the thing I wanna point out about that is if we look at the fan percentage here, the fan tachometer never went above 1300 and our actual fan speed never went above 44. Uh, yeah, so if you played with a custom fan profile, which unfortunately because this is a beta version of Precision, I can't do custom profiles yet, it was, really the fan was super low speed. So if you bumped up the fan speed just a little bit, to give you an idea of 44% on noise level, I'm just gonna stop talking right now and I'm gonna hit apply on that fan speed so you can hear that with my mic. Yeah, you're probably gonna notice that there's no additional noise because there isn't any. So if you were to bump this up, you know, on a fan profile and let it go up to say 60%, you can, you can barely make that out. So let's do this real quick. Let's go back into the game. And uh, with the fan profile set manually to 60, and remember, this is an open air test bench. Inside your case, you still wouldn't hear that. Uh, let's open up Doom again, and let's see what the temperatures do after the fact. Everything's still exactly set up as it was, 4K, film grain through the roof, sharpening through the roof, and um, we're just gonna do some explosions and things here. We want to make the card kind of stress a bit. We want to check and see what happens to the temperatures. I have a feeling they're gonna come down quite a bit. Now, if you're noticing tearing and stuff, yeah, this screen at 4K above 60 FPS does tear quite a bit. But I think with what you've seen so far now, you can see that you can easily lock this particular, um, but you can see that getting the magical FPS number is no problem of uh, locking it at 60 FPS in 4K. That's a big deal to me. All right, so let's look at temperatures now. Our temperatures, oh geez, yeah. See, we were sitting at 66, 67, 66, yeah. So we kind of capped out right there at 66 or 67 C while the game is running. It's still running right now and we're chilling at 67. That is, yeah, that's an amazing cooler right there, regardless of how you feel about the way it looks. Wow. Now I hope you guys understand why I didn't go back and redo all of my benchmark testing with this card because it pretty much would be the same results as this one, only a little bit higher because of the extra 100 megahertz uh, compared to the Founders Edition card because it is a reference PCB layout with the exact same design. So what I wanted to instead show you here today was some of the live gaming with Doom. Again, not they didn't even recommend that I use Doom. I just use Doom because I've been playing it lately. I love the franchise. I played Doom as a kid. It probably lead, led to a lot of the issues I have today, I guess. But you guys wanted to see some live benchmarks, so I went ahead and did that. Now, I also did some Battlefield 4 testing at 4K, and I was getting like 90 FPS with all settings maxed. It was absolutely insane. But one thing I want to point out is this card right here is $700, $699 from NVIDIA. Even though this is a reference PCB layout with the custom cooler on it, right now, it's $649, so it's $50 cheaper than this guy here. You get better, better thermals and a lot less noise and just as much overclocking ability. Now, unfortunately on Twitter, I saw a lot of people complaining about the fact that it only has one eight pin power connector, just like the uh, reference card here. Now, what you have to understand though, is the amount of power that Pascal is not requiring in order to get these massive clocks. People are saying, ah, the 1080 is gonna be a shitty overclocker because it only has one eight pin power connector. Are you freaking kidding me? This thing is achieving 2100 megahertz. My reference card is achieving 2100 megahertz when I played around with the overclock. And it's doing that with a single eight pin power. The additional power connectors are gonna give you cleaner power delivery for exclusive high end wa or water cooling. Yeah, technically, but phase change in LN2 cooling for breaking world records and things like that. It's not going to change your, ma your major overclocking ability on air cooling cooled cards. And unfortunately, a lot of people are out there just kind of regurgitating this whole, ah, it's only got one power connector, so it must suck. I'm sorry, but the GTX 1080, regardless of the brand, achieving 2100 megahertz is a big deal. And to discount that is just to kind of slap technology in the face, which 
I don't know if you're a PC gamer, that's just, that's just wrong in my opinion. Okay, so that's enough ranting. Uh, let's talk about price real quick. This guy, as you know, the founder's card is 700 bucks, $699. GTX uh, 1080 from EVGA, the ACX 3.0 Superclocked, is debuting at $649. So it's the same PCB layout and it's $50 less, which is exactly what we expected to see when we saw the crazy price plan that Nvidia unveiled with the Founders Edition cards. That's it guys. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. We've pretty much got every single brand maker of custom PCB boards coming into the office here. We will be checking them all out. It's gonna be like GTX 1080 season. I apologize ahead of time, but you know, every year we go through this, um, it is like graphics card crazy time of the year. Anyway, time to go guys. Hope you guys have a good Memorial Day weekend if you celebrate that. If you don't, then just have a good weekend in general. And if you don't even get a weekend, well then just have a good day. And if you don't have a day, I understand actually. I, I, I get very little time to myself. So anyway, I'm gonna go play some Doom after I edit this. All right guys, see you in the next one.